What up, Guardians? Fallout here, your friendly neighborhood weapon master, and today truly is a good day because I grinded my eyeballs out of my head and acquired the brand new exotic Air Apparent, formerly known as the Skyburner's Girth. I should probably start calling it by its correct name. I grinded this gun without deleting and restarting any of my Guardians, and that's not really relevant in any way to this weapon review, but I feel like pointing it out. You get this gun by completing triumphs in the new Guardian Games event, which is kind of underwhelming if I'm being honest, but eh, what are you gonna do? If you wanna see the farming method I used to burn through the bounties and the triumphs so quickly in order to get this gun, you can check my last video which goes over the method in a bit more detail. Anyways, on to the gun. What exactly is the air apparent? Well, it's a power weapon, a machine gun that does solar damage and comes with a whopping 900 RPM fire rate. For those of you keeping score at home, that's the fastest rate of fire available for a machine gun, putting the air apparent under the rapid fire frame family, same as the 21% delirium. In theory, that should mean that the gun gets a faster reload speed when the magazine is completely empty. I tested it out and didn't really notice a difference. Maybe a few frames faster at most, oh well. Now before we get to the shiny, fancy features of this new exotic, there's some important things you gotta know. For example, the air apparent comes with an absurd 90 aim assist, same as the hammerhead, but wait, there's more. The air apparent also comes with a 95 recoil direction. This weapon is incredibly easy to control, even with the high rate of fire. Take a look right here. I fired the gun with mouse and keyboard for a while to get a feel for it. Of course, any gun on M&K is gonna feel like a complete laser beam, right? Well, I plugged in a controller. <coughs> Scuff controllers, use promo code Fallout. <coughs> And with my controller, gotta tell ya, easy as hell to control. That's probably due in part to the addition of this perk on the gun, combat grip. Between that and the 95 recoil direction, the air apparent is hella manageable even on controller. There's something else you may have noticed, by the way, and that's that the air apparent does not allow you to aim down the sight of the gun. Well, at least not in the usual way. With other machine guns, ya yeah, ADS, you literally aim down the scope of your gun. With the air, that doesn't happen. You kinda just pull the weapon a little closer to your body and a red dot appears in the middle of your screen. That tiny red dot is all you get for ADSing. Call me crazy, but I actually really like this. I hate it when I have a big boxy weapon cluttering up my screen or a bad awkward scope that cuts out part of my field of view. The air simply does not have that problem. It's very clear aiming, I appreciate it, and the gun has a zero zoom factor overall. Again, call me crazy but I like it. All right, let's get to the meat and potatoes for this gun. The unique perks. First of all, the exotic perk, heavy slug thrower. Unlike other machine guns, the air can't fire. You heard that right. It straight up is not able to fire a bullet until you hold whatever button you usually hold to ADS and spin that puppy up. That's right, this thing is a classic minigun straight out of Predator or Terminator 2 and you gotta spin it up before you can fire. Kind of annoying, but before you write this gun off forever, consider its other perk, Armor of the Colossus. While at full health, spinning up this weapon protects you with an arc shield. Sit back and let me tell you everything I know so far about the arc shield. As the perk says, the arc shield will only appear if you're A, spinning up the gun already, and B, at full health. If you're spinning up the gun but your guardian is hurt, no arc shield. Therefore, if you plan on using the arc apparent, you might want to invest into a high recovery stat so you're at full health more often and able to take advantage of your arc shield more frequently. If you have no ammo in the gun, you can't spin it up and take advantage of a free arc shield. I was really hoping that wasn't the case and I could pull off some goofy shit with just a free arc shield and no ammo, but Bungie, one step ahead, Oh well. Good news though, the shield does regenerate. If you're taking damage while your arc shield is up, then you stop taking damage just like your regular health bar, but your arc shield will auto replenish over time 
and kind of quickly. I was fairly shocked at how quickly the arc shield came back, especially in PvE, but we will get to that later. How long does spinning up the gun take before the arc shield activates? About 1.5 seconds. I know, that's kind of long. Ideally, you would want it to come up right away. I get it. Could be worse. Now you might be wondering, hey Fallout, how strong is that arc shield anyway? Great question, guy. After doing some testing in a private lobby with a friend, we figured out it can take about 80 points of damage max before breaking. If your arc shield does break, it does a hair extra damage to your guardian during the breaking process. It kind of bleeds over to your health bar, if that makes sense, but only a tiny bit, unless your shield is broken by arc damage. This brings me to the main takeaway you need to have when using this monstrosity of a weapon, especially in PvE. The heir apparent is allergic to arc damage. Do not use it if you know your enemies in either PvP or PvE are using arc against you. When I first read the text, an arc shield on this gun, I thought, oh cool, a shield that helps protect you from incoming arc damage. That's not really how it works. Picture it like this, you are now an enemy AI in PvE with this gun. That free arc shield that you're getting is resistant to other forms of damage, including arc damage to a degree, don't worry, I will explain later. But if your arc shield gets broken by arc damage, it will explode in your face big time for 130 damage. That obviously is very bad for you. So again, avoid using the air apparent in situations where you know the enemy is using arc. So how strong is the arc shield against other forms of incoming damage? Well, it's hard to know for sure in PvE because I can't exactly ask the enemy hive shooting me, hey buddy, what damage numbers you got on me. Here's what I learned from PvP though. The free arc shield is very strong against kinetic weapons. When being shot by a kinetic gun of any kind, there was an overall 50% incoming damage reduction per shot and the enemy was unable to get crit damage on me. Example, using the Scholar, AKA the Scout Rifle from Trials of Osiris, my buddy was hitting my arc shield for just 20 damage per shot. And that was both when he shot me in the body and in the dome, 20 damage for each. Now, normally the Scholar does about 39 damage to the body and 68 to the head. Same thing with the spare rations hand cannon against the arc shield, 22 damage per bullet, both in the head and in the body. Normally, the spare rations hits for about 43 in the body and 68 in the head. Two main takeaways there. When your arc shield is up, enemies in PvP cannot get crit damage on you, even if they hit you in the head and it's a 50% incoming damage reduction. However, again, that is just for kinetic weapons. If the enemy is shooting you with an energy weapon, the numbers are a little different. If you're getting shot with a void or solar weapon, you still have incoming damage reduction, but the number dives down from 50% to about 18% damage reduction. That might not sound amazing, but my friend tried point blanking me with a Mindbender's Ambition, one of the deadliest shotguns in PvP, and even though it broke my arc shield, I still lived and didn't even get taken down to red health. Not friggin' bad. Let's review what happens if your enemy hits you with arc damage, though. My buddy shot me with the Hollow Earth Auto Rifle. It's an old gun from Dead Orbit, and it does arc damage by default. Normally, this gun does 14 damage to the body and 21 to the head on an enemy guardian. With my arc shield up, though, the Hollow Earth did 14 damage to both the head and the body. So if you think about it, there is a 0% damage reduction when getting hit by the arc in the body, but incoming headshot will only do body shot level damage. That's not bad, right? Still good to not take full headshot damage, yeah? Again, if they break your arc shield with incoming arc damage, you will get effed up. Your shield blows up in your face for 130 damage and you're left with red health. I cannot stress this enough. The air apparent is allergic to arc damage. And if you know your enemy has it in either PVP or PVE, 
do not equip the gun. That being said, from a PvP perspective, if you're in a game type with not a lot of enemies, like Trials, for example, and you notice that literally none of your enemies are either an arc class or not using any arc weapons, you might have a lot of fun on the power round if you were to use this gun. A 50% incoming damage reduction against kinetic weapons is kinda huge and you can really bully the enemy with your combo arc shield and hella damage output with this gun. I haven't tried it yet because reminder, just got the gun on Thursday, but I'm kinda eager to give it a whirl. I think the meme potential for the heir apparent could be pretty high. Gotta set expectations though. Do I think this gun is gonna skyrocket to the top of the PVP meta? Uh, no. I might see it pop up because it's cool and funny and new, but I don't see this thing being king of the castle in trials or endgame PVP anytime soon. Although, time will tell. And that brings us to PvE. Is the heir apparent going to be good in PvE? Well, let's check it out from a DPS perspective. That's damage per second, if you didn't know. I don't like to assume around here. Anyway, the Xenophage is another exotic machine gun which is pretty hot and heavy in the PvE damage department right now. Does the heir apparent have the power to out DPS the Xenophage? Well, let's hit the tribute hall and find out. So my air apparent does 1,197 crit damage per bullet on our volunteer ogre target. Cool. The air apparent fires at 900 rounds per minute and if we change that to rounds per second we get 15 rounds per second. Quick math, 15 rounds per second at 1,197 damage per bullet and that translates to 17,955 damage per second on the air apparent. Not bad. If you had perfect crit accuracy on that ogre and shot him non-stop in the dome, you'd be doing 17,955 damage per second. All right, now the Xenophage. At the same power level as my air, the Xenophage does 13,776 per shot on the ogre in the Triumph Hall. The Xenophage can't get crits naturally because it fires explosive rounds, tiny little explosions that cannot get critical damage without a debuff, that is. Now that's bad in a way, but also good because it means you don't have to be that accurate when firing the Xenophage. You can hit your target in the head, the neck, the chest, the crotch, doesn't matter. We have our damage per shot and the Xenophage fires at 120 rounds per minute, which breaks down into just two shots per second, much slower than the air apparent. However, with such high damage per shot, that's 13,776 times two, the Xenophage can pump out 27,552 damage per second. That is way, way higher than the air apparent's 17,955 Yikes. Not to mention that because the Xenophage fires explosive rounds, it deals with damage drop off way, way better than the air apparent. The air gets damage drop off just after the 37 meter mark from your target. Meanwhile, the Xenophage can pretty much be way further away, but still do max damage per shot again because it fires explosive shots. But hold on now, don't get sad and throw your new toy in the trash just yet. Is there anything else we can consider? Actually, yeah. How about overall damage output? Damage per second is great if you're in a time crunch and gotta dish out a ton of pain in just a few seconds. But what if you had no rush though, all the time in the world to deal damage? Well, let's find out. The Xenophage at regular ammo capacity can hold 28 shots total. The air apparent, by comparison, can hold a whopping 500 shots at regular max capacity. Damn. So taking our damage numbers from the ogre, if you were to hit the ogre with every shot in your Xenophage, or multiple ogres, I guess, you would overall do 385,728 damage. However, if you were to use every bullet in your air apparent with its absurdly deep mag, you would get 598,500 overall damage output. Good God. All right, too many numbers. What does that all mean? If you're asking me, here is the deal. If you need to quickly dish out a ton of damage in a short window of time, like to a raid boss maybe, the Xenophage still takes the cake 
or exotic machine gun damage output in PvE. But with a capital B, if you're not in a time crunch and have plenty of time to just dish out as much pain as possible to every enemy wherever you are, consider the air apparent. I think that's actually what the gun was designed for. Go into a PvE activity where there are a ton of enemies who want to do terrible things to you. Spin up the air apparent and literally laugh in their face as they try to put a dent in your arc shield as you mow the whole room down. This gun's PvE ease of use factor is insane. I went to my usual law sector on Titan, the one with the ogre that the people love to bully. I have never had an easier or more fun time clearing that room. The hive tried to hurt me and they honestly just could not. The one time my arc shield went down was because I accidentally stopped spinning up the gun but once I got it respinning, none of them had a prayer. Damage, 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 do your best to hurt me, is that all? Nice try, not really, now all of you are dead. Oh, and uh, equip the Actium War Rig Titan Exotic for further hilarity in the form of never needing to reload your gun ever. Use the Xenophage on the raid boss if you wanna kill it quickly, but I'm using the Air Apparent to get to the raid boss. Unless, of course, the enemies have a lot of arc damage. Hey, you, do me a favor, would you? If you found this video helpful, please click the like button, and if you haven't already, please click subscribe and help support my channel. If you are a super homie, you can click the gray notification bell, which apparently is the best way overall to help out my channel. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.